الحمد لله نحمد الله سبحانه وتعالى ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له وصرواته والسلام على سيدنا حبيبنا أفضل خلق الله على سيدنا محمد ابن عبد الله وعلى آله وصحابته ومن والاه أما بعد فعباد الله أوصيكم أوصي نفسي بتقوى الله فإن مخافة الله رأس الخير ورأس الحكمة الحمد لله الله سبحانه وتعالى says in his book قل to the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم لن يصيبك لن يصيبنا إلا ما كتب الله لنا هو مولانا وعلى الله فليتوكل المؤمنون Say to them, remind the believers, وَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ ذِكْرَ تَنْفَعَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Say to them, nothing will afflict you, لَنْ يُصِيبَنَا Nothing will afflict us, إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ Except what Allah has decreed for us. Nothing will afflict you, except what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed for us. هُوَ مَوْلَانَا He's our protector. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. هُوَ مَوْلَانَا وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ And upon Allah, let the believers place their trust. تَوَكَّلْنَا عَلَى اللَّهِ When you enter your house, you say, تَوَكَّلْتُ عَلَى اللَّهِ When you leave your house, you say, تَوَكَّلْتُ عَلَى اللَّهِ You can be in your house, an earthquake comes. You can go out, you get hit by a car. Or you get uh, something happens to you. This is the nature of dunya. Dunya daru bala. It's the abode of tribulation. Anybody that wants a good ride here, they're in the wrong place. It's as simple as that. And this is something Muslims for centuries they've known. When the Mongols came and invaded the Muslims, they knew how to respond. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. We belong to Allah. And to him we return. This dunya is fania, daru fania. It's, a, it's, a, uh, it's effinescing before our eyes, literally. You know, one of the interesting things about humans, when we look at each other, all you see is dead cells. You don't even see the living person in front of you. Everything that's, that's presented to my eyes and what's presented to your eyes is just dead cells. We're already dead. إِنَّكَ مَيِّتُونَ وَإِنَّهُمْ مَيِّتُونَ You're dead and they're dead. This is dunya. This is dunya. دَوْ دِنْكِ دُنْيَا هَيْ This is dunya. And so we have to recognize where we are and then act accordingly. So when tribulations happen, one of the things the Prophet ﷺ, he saw Ibn Abbas. Now you have to imagine this is his, the brother of his father's son. So you think about the Hanan of the Prophet, his love in his heart for every human being. Because he was Rahma for the entire, not just humans, trees, rivers, mountains, stars, planets. He was Rahma. Ma arsalnaka illa rahmatan lil alameen. So here's Ibn Abbas. He's a young boy, and the Prophet, he loved the Shuban. He said, Halafuni Shuban wa Halafuni Shiyukh. He said, The young people believed in me, and the old people. You know when he said that verse? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed not to be like those who, that time passed and their hearts became hard. Because older people, their hearts get hard. But the Shabab, they have brittleness in their hearts still. They have idealism. They want to change the world. They want to make it a better place. They see injustice. It upsets them. If you don't guide the youth, if you don't guide the youth, they will go astray, thinking they're doing right. We have a responsibility towards our youth. So he took Ibn Abbas and he said, Ya Ghulam, come here, young boy. Ya Ghulam, it's his, it's his cousin. يَا غُلَامْ إِنِّي وَعَلِّمُكَ كَلِمَاتِ Let me teach you some words. And, and this is our Prophet ﷺ. إِنَّمَا بُعِدْتُ مُعَلِّمًا I was only sent to teach. يَا غُلَامْ 
إني وعلمك كريما احفظ الله يحفظك You take care of what Allah has told you to preserve from the awamr and the nawahi and Allah will preserve you. You take care of what Allah has told you to do and Allah will take care of you. Ihfadillah. And then he repeated it again. Ihfadillah tajidhu tujahak. Guard Allah, meaning guard these awamr and nawahi, these commands and prohibitions. Guard these things and you will find God before you. He will be before you. Tajidhu tujahak. إِذَا سَأَلْتْ فَاسْأَلِ اللَّهِ If you want to ask, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَإِذَا اسْتَعَنْتْ فَاسْتَعِنْ بِاللَّهِ If you need help, if you need aum, if you need support, take your support from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَعْلَمْ And know. Look at these imperatives. وَعْلَمْ Know. Understand. لَوْ اجْتَمَعْتُ الْأُمَّةُ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَنْفَعُوكَ لَنْ يَنْفَعُوكَ إِلَّا بِشَيْءٍ قَدْ كَتَبُهُ اللَّهُ لَكَ if, if this Ummah in its entirety, and this is Muslims, non-Muslims, the Ummah of, of, of the Prophet is the entire world. Once he comes into the world as the Prophet, his Ummah is all those people. Like the, the Ummah is, is the Ummah of Da'wah and Istijaba. If the whole world wants to configure to benefit you, and that benefit was not decreed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will not get that benefit. وَإِنْ اجْتَمَعُوا وَلَوْ اجْتَمَعُوا عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَضُرُّوكَ لَنْ يَضُرُّوكَ إِلَّا بِشَيْءٍ قَدْ كَذَبُهُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكَ And if they configured, if they got together, conspired to harm you, all of them, the whole lot of them, they will not harm you except what Allah has decreed against you. وَرُفِعَتِ الْأَقْلَامِ the pens have been lifted and the ink is dry. This is Yaqeen. He's teaching him Yaqeen. Be certain about your religion. Now, we know that towards the latter days, and we know that the Prophet came and he said, And he put his sabab and his wustah together. I was sent, and, and, and the end of time is like this. That was 1400 years ago. So all we know is we're 1400 years closer to that. He said, harj. You're going to see in, 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 as the hour draws near, you will see harj. They said, what is harj, Ya Rasulullah? He said, al-qatl. But it's, harj is a specific type of qatl. It's indiscriminate killing. Sahih Muslim, the Prophet said, لا تقوم الساعة حتى يقتل المقتول ولا يدري لما قتل يقتل القاتل ولا يدري لما قتل ويقتل المقتول ولا يدري لما قتل صحيح حديث The one killing won't know why he's killing and the one being killed won't know why he's being killed Why is this happening? All of the things that happen on this planet that are negative happen from the sins of humanity. It's as simple as that. Human beings, we're, we're, there's two types of humans. There's bees and there's wasps. And you choose which group you want to be in. Bees are beneficial, wasps are harmful. But Allah created a world with bees and wasps. He's Dhul Jalali, the Lord of the bees, the Lord of the Wasp, Dhul Jalali, Majesty, Wal Ikram, and the Lord of the Bees. He's the Lord of both. The bees give us honey, we heal our bodies with it, nourish our bodies with it, and they give us wax. Traditionally, wax was used for candles to light people's houses. That's what bees do. Wasps, they just harm. And, and, and the world has a lot of wasps in it. Not, not the kind with wings and stingers, human wasps. They just harm people. That's their nature. They can't help it. It's like the, the scorpion and the frog. He wants to go across the pond, carry me across the pond. The frog says, I'm not stupid. You'll sting me. He said, that's stupid. It, just get me across. I wouldn't. It will die. 
So the frog says, hop on. Halfway across the pond, the scorpion stings him. He said, why'd you do that? He said, my nature. There's some people, they can't help it. They're just, they're people, the Prophet called them uh, the mafatih the al-sharr, keys to evil. Why they're here? Allah Ta'ala anam. We, we can't, Allah created good and evil. Liya come to test you. So, there's a hadith in Sahih Muslim in which the Prophet Sallallahu Ali says that he said about the khawarij. سمعت يقول وأهوى بيده قبل العراق. He pointed his fingers towards العراق, the country of Iraq, what's now Iraq. And he said, يخرج منه قوم يقرؤون القرآن لا يجاوز تراقيهم. يمرقون من الإسلام مروق السهم من الرمية. These people are going to read Quran, it won't go past their throats. In other words, it won't go to the heart. They won't understand it. And then he said, they will leave this religion like an arrow leaves the bow. In another hadith, he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, يَأْتِي فِي آخِرِ الزَّمَانِ قَوْمٌ حُدَثَاءُ الْأَسْنَانِ Young people, سُفَهَاءُ الْأَحْلَامِ The Safih is somebody who's a he can't control himself. He's mubadhir. A safi and wealth is somebody who's extravagant. They waste their money. They're incontinent. They can't control themselves. He said they're sufaha, al-ahlam. Yaquluna min khayri qawl al bariya They'll say the best of words. In other words, they'll quote the Quran and hadith. Yamruquna min al-islam kama yamruqu sahmu min al-ramiya la yujawizu imanahum hanajirahum. Fa'inama laqaytumuhum faqtuluhum. Fi'inna qatruhum ajar. You have to remove this plague. It's as simple as that. This is a plague on humanity. Now, that's what the Prophet said. The, the word Safa, if you, if you, here's what the ulama said in the tafsir of Safa. Hasudu tafsir al safi fi sifat al munafiqeen ala majmu' al lughat anhu zahir al jahal. They're ignorant people. Adim al aqal, they have no intellect. Khafif al lub, their hearts are weak. Ba'if al rai, they have no opinion. Radi al faham, stupid. Mustakhif al qadar, low. Siri al dhanb, sinful. Haqir al nafs, contemptible. Makhdu al shaytan. Fooled by shaitan. This is called Telbisu Iblis. When shaitan plays with you. Asiru Tughyan. Daimul Isyan. Mulazim al Kufran. La yubari bima kan. That's the Safiyah. Now, in another hadith, the Prophet said, Inna bayna yadaya sa'ala harja. Qala Abu Musa al Ash'ari. Qutu ya Rasulullah ma al harj. Qala al qatlu. قال فقال بعض المسلمين يا رسول الله إن نقتل الآن في العام الواحد من المشركين كذا وكذا. Well, we fight the mushriks now. The polytheists they were fighting them. They defend themselves. He said we kill them every year. Some die. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said ليس بقتل المشركين لكن يقتل بعضهم بعضا بعضكم بعضا. It's not going to be killing from the mushrikeen. Some of you will kill others. Now look at what he said. حتى يقتل الرجل جاره وابن عمه. He'll kill his neighbor. He'll kill his cousin. وذا قرابته and a relative. فقال بعض القوم يا رسول الله أمعنا عقولنا. Do we have intellects? The the Sahaba were intelligent people. They said, Do we have intellects, يا رسول الله? What did he say? لا. No brains. The people of that time, the majority of them are without brains. <laughs> and they'll leave people haba, you know, weightless people, without gravity. Gravitas means weighty. You know, we're. Allah made us thaqalain. You know, jinn and ins were called thaqalain because we're weighty. We're weighty physically, which holds us down to the earth. If you're too light, you just fly up. You know, like the jinn. 
just move up, gas. But we, Allah made us thaqal, thiqal, right? He made us weighty spiritually and physically. But if we lose our spiritual weight, our physical weight has no meaning. In fact, all we're doing is space, that's all. The Prophet ﷺ said, if your umarah are tyrants and your aghniya are bukhala, your aghniya are bukhala and your umarah are tyrants. So your rich are misers, your amirs are, are tyrants. He said, batnul ard khairu lakum min zahiri. Min zahiriha. That to be under the earth is better than being over the earth. This is our tribulation. This is our time. Allah put us in this time. He knows why He put us in this time. But the only time I ever saw the Prophet ask for death in, in all the hadiths that I've read and all the du'as of the Prophet that I've read, I only saw one time that he asked Allah to take him. He said, in, in one he gives the choice, if it's better for me, then take me. Right? But this hadith he specifically says, and he said it after every prayer according to one riwayah. He said, Allahumma inni asruka fi'l al khayrat. Let me do good things. Wa tark al munkarat. And let me avoid bad things. Give me tark al munkarat. Wa hub al masakin. Let me love poor people. Give me love of poor people. Why? Because they're ahl al jannah. Tahajat al jannah to an nar. The jannah and nar got into a debate. The jannah said, the nar said, I've got, look at these tyrants. You know, I've got all these tyrants. They were big people in the earth. They ruled, they had power. And the Jannah says, what do I have? I have all these weak people, poor people, oppressed people. And Allah said, the Nar is my punishment for those tyrants. And the Jannah is my reward for those patient ones. The Prophet said, can I tell you the people of Jannah? He said, kullu da'if and mutada'af. Every weak oppressed. Those are the people of Jannah. So right now Muslims, People think we're causing the problems. <laughs> Seriously, it's amazing how shaitan, this is terbisu iblis. Iblis has made these people think we're causing the problem. The Muslims are suffering more. 20 people died yesterday in, in, in Cairo in a, in a restaurant from a bomb thrown into it. There's over a million dead Iraqis. A million dead Iraqis. Even Tony Blair admitted that we open the door. There's no Daesh without the American invasion of, of Iraq. Right? Something horrible has been unleashed on this planet. But unfortunately, we have a lot of angry, resentful Muslims. And when I say a lot, it's significantly insignificant. But we are 1.7 billion people. So even our insignificant numbers are significant. So you might say there's only 400,000, that's the latest estimate of these people. There's only 400,000, that's a lot of people. And then you look at their sympathizers. They, they estimate they're about 15 million. This, these are estimates, Allahu Alam. But that's a lot of people. That is a gross misunderstanding of our religion. Because anybody that can tell me Islam is a cruel thing, I would tell you you are a liar. Anybody can tell me that the Prophet was cruel, I would tell that you are a liar. Our Prophet, what, لَوْ كُنْتَ فَضَّنْ فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ By the mercy of Allah, you have a soft heart. وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضَّنْ غَلِيذَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْ فَضُّوا مِنْ حَوْلِكَ If you were hard-hearted, if you were harsh, you would see them fleeing. Look at, the, the, look at these people and you see if everybody's flocking around them. You look at everybody fleeing from these people. And if you think, and Allahu Alam what happened down south, I don't know. You know, we, we have to, these, first of all, we're dealing with a demonic element, really. There's clearly a demonic, uh, we believe in the jinn and we believe in the unseen. CNN doesn't know about that. So they're not going to be reporting about Iblis' activities. Right? That's an unfortunate thing. They used to believe in the devil. In fact, one of their theologians said the biggest trick 
that the devil ever pulled on this civilization was making them think he didn't exist. But unfortunately, Iblis doesn't make the news. Abdullah makes the news. Ghulam makes the news. Sayyid makes the news. A lot of you have those names. And, and some of you have, you know, you fit the profile. And then they show up, they have, like, they had somebody dressed like Osama bin Laden in their minds, saying, yeah, he was a friend of mine, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm a peaceful Muslim. For the guy in Kentucky, he looked just like Osama bin Laden. This is the mentality we're dealing with. Now, we have a responsibility as Muslims in this country. Either you pack up and leave, that's an option. Hijrah is an option. Seriously, people can pack up and leave. Good luck. Syria, Libya, Yemen, Iraq, Kashmir, Chechnya, Philippines. I mean, there's not a lot of options here. <laughs> but we have to deal with the fact that we live in this country. I'm from this country on, on my mother's side all the way back 1764. They came from Ireland. So I go way back. I, I have a great-grandfather fought in the Revolutionary War. So, I've been here a long time, uh, at least my ancestors have. Some of you are, are, are new, but this is a land of immigrants. The only people that can honestly say that they're, you know, they're from here are what they call Native Americans, and they're not even from here. They're from Mongolia. So everybody made hijrah here at some point. And, and, and migration is a sunnah of God on this planet. Birds migrate. Every, traditionally, borders were open. People should be able to go where they want. That, that's a, a human right. But we have borders now, and, and Allah says, أَطِيعُ اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُ الرَّسُولُ وَأُولِي الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ We have to obey the law. Anybody that comes into this country, and I said this three days before 9-11. They didn't report that. They reported something else. But I said three days before 9-11 in Philadelphia. I have it on tape. I said, anybody that comes into this country with a visa, or is living under the law of this land and they commit a criminal act or a terrorist act, the Prophet ﷺ is against them. Because this is our religion. You have to obey the law of the land that you're in. And the Prophet was a law-abiding. When he was in Mecca, he was a law-abiding citizen. You look at his seerah in Mecca. He didn't have terrorist cells. He didn't have anybody assassinated in Mecca. He was oppressed. But he was a citizen of that, and Darul Nadwa were the, the Ul al Amri in Mecca, and the only time you don't obey them is if it's a ma'asiyah to Allah. But nobody's, no Americans putting a gun at your hand saying drink alcohol or eat pork like they did in Spain and Andalusia. Right? They used to do that to the Muslims. If you go to Spain today, they have this big meat of pork, and when you come into the little shops in Andalusia, they cut off a piece of the pork and they offer it you. Why do they do that? Because that was a test. Hundreds of years later, they still do it because it's tradition for them. But they used to test Muslims, have some pork. And if they didn't eat it, they would report them to the Inquisition. We're not in that situation. Now, the other thing, one of the benefits of this, and trust me, the only way you get strong is resistance. If you want to build your muscles, you have to have resistance. Allah puts resistance to make us stronger, spiritually and physically. Everything that's happened to us is good. It's all good. That's a hadith in Sahih Muslim, Suhaib al-Rumi. Everything that's happened to us is good. If we have Ayn al-Yaqeen, if we have the eye of certainty, if you're caught up in dunya, oh, my dunya is not looking good, that, then that's another thing. That's not tiklan ala Allah. That's another problem. That's a disease of the heart. The unsettling state that the Muslims are in in this country, this is a good thing. It's about time Muslims start waking up. You've been here for a long time. What have you done? Who have you, who have you told out there who you are? Where are all the amazing free clinics? Not one down in Los Angeles or one over here. Where's the Muslim hospital? where we treat anybody that comes. You don't need insurance, because Muslims traditionally did that. We, in, in this country, 
The Muslim physicians are worth several billion dollars. Several billion dollars. Where are institutions? Where, where are our colleges? Where's our television station? The Mexicans have dozens of television stations. Dozens. And when we do these things, we usually do them so poorly, nobody's going to watch. So we have to wake up. But trust me, you have to accept what comes to you with intelligence, but you have to accept what, what comes to you. Allah is waking this ummah up, and we're still snoring. And it keeps happening until people wake up. You break the covenant with Allah, يحفظي لا يحفظك. يحفظي لا يحفظك. You break the covenant with Allah, then if Allah removes His providential care, you have no one to blame but yourself. مَنْ وَجَدَ خَيْرًا فَلْيَحْمَدِ اللَّهِ وَمَنْ وَجَدَ غَيْرَ ذَلِكَ فَلَا يَلُومَنَّ إِلَّا نَفْسَ If you find good, thank Allah. And if you find anything other than good, don't blame anybody but yourself. Because that's, that's the madhab of Islam. You want the madhab of Islam? That's the madhab of Islam. The madhab of Islam is Why is this happening? Why did we lose Uhud? We're the people of truth. We were with the Prophet. That's Sahaba, the best. Have we disobeyed the Prophet? Those people on the, on the mountain that abandoned their, their for booty, for dunya, they abandoned their, their place and, and they lost, they had a, they, they, even the Prophet was bloodied, he lost uh, part of his tooth, he had the chain mail in his cheek, the place where his blood s uh, dropped still smells like musk, I've been there, the smell is amazing. After 1400 years, you can still get the whiff of that from his blood that was spilt there. But that's our Prophet So if Muslims don't obey Allah and obey his messenger, Allah wa Rasul wa amri minkum. As long as they don't tell you to disobey Allah. And that's any government you're under. Whether it's a Muslim government, whether it's a Christian government, like in Habasha, were they having terrorist organizations planning to assassinate Najashi, that kafir, that Trinitarian kafir? No, they went, they spoke, Amr ibn Aus went there and said, oh, they say this and that about your religion, right? When, when the Prophet's companions went there and Ja'far spoke, he didn't say, yeah, you, you're a kafir because you say, in Allah, thalithu thalatha, you say that, no. He said, here's what our religion teaches. He didn't attack his religion. He said, here's what our religion teaches. And Najashi had tears coming down his eyes. This is the hikmah. Our Prophet never created any terrorist organization. He never had cells. He never had secret meetings at night. His, his, his home is completely transparent. We even know what was revealed in the house. We know the domestic disputes. We know Aisha. We know about the honey. We know about Zainab. We know about Hafsa. Open book. That's our Prophet ﷺ. He had nothing to hide, nothing to be ashamed of. And if you're practicing his faith, you have nothing to hide and you have nothing to be ashamed of. And I'll just conclude by saying one thing. This Ummah, historically, is the single most extraordinary civilization in human history. No civilization has the record that this Ummah, you have nothing to be ashamed about of your fathers, your ancestors, but we should be ashamed about how we represent them today. The people that built Taj Mahal, if these guys got to India, they'd blow up Taj Mahal because it's a tomb. <laughs> they'd blow up Taj Mahal. A'udhu Billah. Bid'ah. Alhamdulillah, 
يقول في كتابه إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم مبارك على سيدنا محمد We are very fortunate to be in the Bay Area. And I udhakirukum bi ni'milah. This is a very educated place. And as you know, you have neighbors, you have people that you work with at your jobs. They're by and large good people. This is a reality. There, th this civilization has been trying very hard to overcome its historical sins of racism. You know, they're trying. They're not there yet, but they're trying. There's a lot of people trying. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا كَانَ رَبُّكَ لِيُهْلِكَ الْقُرَى بِظُلْمٍ وَأَهْلُهَا مُصْلِحُونَ Allah will not destroy a people for ظُلْم. Baydawi says it's shirk here. If amongst them are people that are trying to rectify. And there's a lot of people that try to do that. That's something that we have to recognize about this culture. But these people are frightened. They're scared of us. Just like Muslims in the Muslim world are scared of the Americans. They are. They're scared of drones. They're scared of, of bombs and strikes. They're scared. The Americans here, they're afraid of us. Because they have been brainwashed into thinking this is a religion of hatred, of terrorism. We have a responsibility. We have a responsibility. And unfortunately, when events like this happen, and Allahu Alam, what happened? But when events like what happened in San Bernardino, where it's somebody who's been working for several years at a place, everybody knows him, even the Muslims say he didn't appear to be radical, and suddenly he goes ballistic, then people start thinking, maybe Ghulam, you know, he, he seems normal, but look at that guy down there. You know, they're, they're afraid, and you have to recognize that. Do you know? So it's important for us to, to be aware of the time we're living in. Uh, I, I received something the other day. Somebody was at a place where Bill O'Reilly was staying. And, and Bill O'Reilly was having dinner. And there was a Muslim family in a table next to him. And they started having a debate, should we reach out to him? And just ask him to. And some of them said, it's a waste of time. He won't do anything. There's no benefit. And some of them said, no, we should do something. So they, they, they got a, a dessert, and they sent it over to his table, just as a gift. And then he acknowledged them. The next day, they saw him again, and they decided to approach him. And one of them sat and had a long conversation with him about being a Muslim and how, what Islam is. The, after the San Bernardino incident, when he mentioned it, he mentioned this man at the table, and he said, Unfortunately, this taints millions of good, law-abiding Americans. Even people that have horrible track records. If Listen to the words of Allah. Don't return a wrong with another wrong. That's true. That's true. Allah says. You can redress wrong with justice, which he called a sayyah. It's not a sayyah, but it looks like it because it's harsh and it's intiqam. But he said, وَمَنْ عَفَى وَأَصْلَحْ فَأَجْرُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ Right? But people forget that. They forget all those verses in the Quran that tell us, and, and what did our Prophet do? That's his, that's his sunnah. You want to follow the sunnah of the Prophet? Reach out to your enemies. Because that's what he did. He sat with them when, when his wife's mother came to Medina, she wouldn't sit with her because she was a mushrik. She wouldn't sit with her. And the verse was revealed, Her own family was fighting. But this was a woman who was a non-combatant. She wasn't fighting you. And Allah said, she's your mother. Bring her in. Treat her with bir. This is our religion. Then the one with who you have animosity towards, suddenly he's like your best friend. Don't despair of the grace of Allah. Because the people that hate Islam most, according to the Prophet, become the best supporters of Islam. That's a hadith. 
So don't think because they hate Islam. Everybody's looking at death. Everybody's looking at death. One of the rahmas that we had is the study Quran that came out, that Harper Perennial published. Hopefully many, many Americans will buy that and see an intelligent religion and a beautiful scripture that calls people to these high ideals. This is, this is, these, are, these are great blessings in the midst of the tribulation. So, نَحْنُ فِي عَيْنَ الْبَلَاءَ مَعَ الْعَافِيَةِ Like Imam Al-Mujaddidi said. We're in the midst of tribulation in the dunya, but we have the well-being of Allah. Alhamdulillah. So, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, make us uh, lighthouses that show people what, what true Islam is. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevate our community. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala restore our intellects for those who have lost them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put the plots of those who plot against this religion, may they fall back on them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from their evil. May Allah guide those who are ignorant amongst them who want good. May Allah guide them. And those who know what Islam is and yet are distorting it, may Allah deal with them as He deals with people that are evil. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, protect this country. And, and, and protect the Muslims in this country and protect the people that we live amongst. May we be good neighbors to them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our women and give them courage in the face of these calamities and protect our children. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah restore our, our, our brothers and sisters in other places to better times. May Allah restore security to the Muslim lands. And, 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 and give them succor and repose and help. And may Allah give us yaqeen in our hearts to know that nothing will afflict us except what Allah has decreed for us. May Allah give us the yaqeen of Ibn Abbas. May Allah give us the, the, the sincerity of those early people, inshallah. And may Allah forgive all of us, forgive this, protect this masjid and all our masjids, these places of worship, and protect the synagogues and protect the churches and protect the temples. These are the things that we were sent to protect as a community. Kuntum khayra ummatan ukhrijat linnas. Linnas. You came out for all of humanity. May Allah restore these truths to our hearts and to our community. Inna Allah ya'maru bil adili wa ihsan. He commands to justice and charity. Ya'maru bil adili wa ihsan. Wa ita'i dhul qurba. Wa yanha'an al fahshai wa munkar. He prohibits foulness and dishonorable things. And aggression and oppression. He forbids these things to aggress against people. May Allah realize these truths in our hearts. He's exhorting us that perhaps we might be reminded.